Hey guys, welcome back to another Vader comic issue. Today we're going to be covering Vader 2020 issue number 14, The Blade Behind the Curtain. Picking up where we left off, and if you aren't up to date on where we are today in today's issue, I have an entire playlist of Vader comic series comic issues in hierarchical order. So go check those out if you want to catch up. Otherwise, if you're ready to go, let's continue. Darth Vader, War of the Bounty Hunters, The Blade Behind the Curtain. After Exegol, Darth Vader understands the true might of the Emperor's power. Vader must destroy Luke Skywalker, the one threat to his restored position. But others scheme in the shadows, and the dangerous Crimson Dawn Syndicate rises to challenge the galactic power structure. Vader's brought Boku the Hutt to heal and foiled an assassination attempt by IG-88. Who hired the deadly droid to kill Darth Vader? We start the comic on Coruscant, where some Imperials are noting how miraculous Vader is. That he entered Exegol and fought a Summa Verminoth on just these droid parts. And now that he's been put back together, he's in full power. This makes the Embaran shake with fear. Administrator Moore, Lord Vader is restored. Are you not delighted? Your eminence, I accept your judgment. You sent me to destroy Lord Vader. I failed. Of course you failed. <laughs> Where are you going? To the palace, Grand Vizier. No, your services are required in the pre-screen department. That's a task for sub-administrator. Yes, it is. As the Umbaran is now demoted, Masamita and Emperor Palpatine go on with their duties. As she does mundane stuff in the lower levels of her job now, she learns that Jabba has lost Han Solo, and that the rebel, who is frozen in carbonite, has some sort of a connection to Skywalker. And this makes the Umbaran think. She leads her way into a room in the former Jedi Temple, now the stronghold of the Empire, the Emperor's headquarters, if you will, and she she tries to access Vader's entire robotic system. Now, the fact that she can even get in here to me is a little bit questionable as this is some highly classified stuff that only the Emperor could really dive into, but I guess that's different in canon now. As she's interrupted by Masamita, he questions what does a sub-administrator of the court have to do with viewing Vader's armor? She lies of course and she says, you know, I just want to make sure that he's fully functional and he's up to speed so that he can carry out the Emperor's wishes and, you know, they can win at everything they do. I thought the Sith destroy the weak. The Emperor glories in it. So this part was actually pretty cool. Uh, Masamita and the Umbaran speak of how they're not Sith, that they merely serve them, and they don't have the power to indulge in the pleasantries that the Sith get to indulge in. It's almost like how vampires had mortal worshippers, so to speak. The vampires in this sense being, you know, Vader and the Emperor. As Masamita leaves and the Umbaran takes a drive with the information on Vader's schematics and weaknesses with her, she hands it to one of her men, to one of the Shadow People, who then directly uploads it to IG-88. And now at this point, we catch up with where we left off in issue number 13, which is why it says see Darth Vader number 13 right here, because now it's resuming where we left off at the end of that issue. You are greedy and foolish and you fought him alone. What will it take to teach you, all of you, so much fear? Our enemies are strong, but true power works through a million hands. As IG-88 is sliced in half by Vader who comes just blazing out of nowhere from behind, the Shadow People run away as he chases them, running into the Jedi Temple, which is pretty cool because now we're at the Jedi Temple again. The Umbaran hits the switch and Vader becomes a little bit frozen for a mere moment. As she orders her men to fire at him and attack, despite being frozen cybernetically and physically, Vader controls them and disarms the blasters immediately. As Vader gets the upper hand and the Umbaran starts to talk more smack, Vader takes her hand off. I am a Sith. You cannot bend my will. I, I would never presume, Lord Vader. I merely wanted to see if you were still plagued by fear. The only fear in this place is yours. Y yes, I am afraid. You could kill me effortlessly, but that would do nothing to save you from Skywalker. What do you know of Skywalker? Only he can displace you in the Emperor's favor. He's weak. He will die. So right here, I, I got a cut in between. Either Vader's pretending like he wants to kill Luke, or I'm just completely missing something where they're changing the story a little bit, because Vader full on never wanted to kill Luke. We can see this in The Empire Strikes Back. We can see it even before he fights Luke in The Empire Strikes Back, when he is already telling the Emperor if he could be turned, and then he sees Luke, he fights him, and he tries to turn Luke to the dark side and says, join me. And at the end of The Empire Strikes Back, he telepathically tries to connect with Luke and to see where he's at and what he's doing when Luke springs up and says, father, and then, you know, leans back and says, Ben, 
why didn't you tell me? Then again, in Return of the Jedi, we get another scene where Vader is trying to reach out to Luke. And it's in a deleted scene where Luke is restoring his light. He's basically building his green lightsaber. And this was a scene not many have seen, but you can find it on YouTube quite easily. And that was another moment where Vader was telepathically trying to reach out to Luke. So nowhere is Vader ever really trying to kill his son. And in my theory, my mind, in fact, he was even trying to save him when Luke tried to strike the Emperor down with anger. He was trying to block it, not for the Emperor. He didn't care about the Emperor. He was always trying to kill the Emperor, but he wasn't strong enough. That's why he was always trying to recruit Luke to do it. So he blocked the Emperor, in my opinion, and this is just a theory, because he didn't want Luke to strike the Emperor down in anger and therefore starting his path down the dark side because he didn't want him to end up like him. Anyways, let's continue. Now, it's very possible that Vader is just trying to throw, you know, a ruse on all of these people here and just say, yeah, you know, I definitely want to kill Skywalker, but, you know, have his own ideas on what he's going to do and obviously try to turn him to the dark side. But he can't really tell them that, can he? She tells Vader that even with all of his power, it's no good if he can't find him. She says that Solo is the key, Skywalker's friend frozen in carbonite. And of course, Vader remembers because this is the one that he froze in carbonite himself. Skywalker will follow him wherever he goes. She says someone is selling Solo, and if he tries to do it himself to get Solo, then the Emperor will know. So she can do it for him. And they're like, well, why would we even trust you? You tried to kill us. You tried to kill Vader with the IG-88 droid. And she replies with something pretty lame that doesn't really make much sense. She says, well, the person who could kill him now is Skywalker, so no one else can do it, which doesn't really answer any of the questions before of why she was trying to kill him. I would be delighted to bring them together. So be it, Umbaran. So here we see an auction for Han Solo, where Jabba and Baku are bidding on him. Does anyone else notice Jabba's arm tattoo? So they enter a bidding war with each other, when of course an Imperial shuttle lands and it's none other than Vader, making his way through the doors to get between Jabba and Boku and steal Han Solo frozen in carbonite. Now for me, I'm a little bit confused at this point. I always figured that Boba Fett and Cannon had delivered Han Solo to Jabba himself personally. And this is why we see Boba Fett at Jabba's palace in Return of the Jedi. So I'm not really sure what's going, like are they just, is it like a private auction between Jabba and Boku now? And then is Vader gonna try to get in there? And they earlier they said Boba failed to deliver. I mean, I'm just kind of confused. If someone wants to fill me in, I'd love for that. And I might even make a video on this myself because I don't really know what the heck is going on at this point. Like I can kind of figure out what's happening, but I'm a little bit confused. I thought IG-88 died in the Empire Strikes Back. I thought Boba delivered Han Solo. So hey, if there's any, if there are any sweaties out there who get it, or maybe I'm just missing something, I would love to have that explained in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this comic breakdown. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.